In this video, I'm going to show you how to create advanced cryptocurrencies powered by the Ethereum blockchain. So if you want to create a cryptocurrency that's unique and stands out from everyone else, then you're going to want to watch this whole video. All right. So before we get into that, if you're new around here, hey, I'm Gregory from DAP University. And on this channel, I teach you how to become a blockchain master. So if that's something that sounds good to you, then click the like button down below and click subscribe. And if you want to become a real world blockchain developer, then head on over to dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. So let's talk about creating an advanced cryptocurrency. So one of the reasons I'm making this video is to show you what's possible when you create your own cryptocurrencies on Ethereum. Because I get a lot of requests from people to create tokens. And I just finished a project um, with a token that had some out of the box type features um, that aren't standard with Ethereum tokens. So I want to explain how that works and how you might be able to create something similar. All right. So let's start off by looking at how Ethereum tokens are created. Um, most Ethereum tokens, as far as cryptocurrency goes, um, are created with something called uh, the ERC-20 standard. All right, so a quick explanation of that. Um, the power of Ethereum is that it allows you to create your own cryptocurrency without creating your own blockchain. You can write a smart contract um, that governs how your token works, basically just program a cryptocurrency and put it on the blockchain. And that way you can take advantage of Ethereum uh, and its blockchain without having to create one yourself. All you have to do is write a program that governs the token. So ERC-20 is a standard that governs how these tokens work. It basically describes, you know, the functions that the token must have and also, you know, what the, the functions must do and also the types of return values and things like that, right? So what I want to talk about specifically is, you know, this is a standard, it's a specification uh, that governs how the cryptocurrencies can work. Um, so they all work the same, like in wallets and on exchanges. Um, but as long as you adhere to the standard uh, for, for what this says it's supposed to do, you can still add additional behavior to the cryptocurrency, um, even inside these functions. So for example, you know, uh, as long as the transfer function, you know, this is the function that actually sends the cryptocurrency, as long as it does what this spec tells it to do, it can also do other things inside that function um, as long as it also satisfies this criteria. So that's what I'm going to talk about. And if you, uh, you know, modify these functions inside the ERC-20 standard uh, in your own token, you can do things like, you know, create inflationary cryptocurrencies, you can create deflationary cryptocurrencies. You can create cryptocurrencies that automatically, uh, you know, change people's balances, mint new balances, all kinds of crazy stuff. Okay, so we can even look examples of this, like on EtherScan. Uh, here's an example of a token, a Kick token that implements stuff like this. Uh, oh, and before I, <laughs> before I start talking about these, I also want to say that I don't condone anyone, uh, you know, creating scam coins or anything like that. So definitely don't like do this and be dishonest, right? Like don't uh, create a transfer, like a, a token that has code in it that's misleading and deceives other people and steals their money. Like that's definitely not what I'm advocating here. Um, but you can, uh, you know, create, cryptocurrencies that have, you know, a certain property that your users actually know about, right? And it's really important to verify your smart contracts on EtherScan so other people can see how they work and so that you're transparent about how it works uh, when they hold the cryptocurrency, all right? So look at this uh, token, for example, this is Kick token. And basically, you know, here's an example of uh, how they modify the ERC-20 spec. It's kind of funny, actually. Um, so if you go to like the balance of function, for example, See, the balance of function <laughs> actually uh, doesn't just return the actual balance of the user. It returns their balance plus this special frozen balance. <laughs> so what does that mean? Well, basically, uh, you know, you can have tokens inside your wallet that you can't actually spend. They're frozen. So if you were to hold this token like in MetaMask, for example, uh, and you added it like right here, you might see that you have, you know, a million tokens, but you wouldn't necessarily be able to spend them all uh, because part of them might be frozen. All right. So this is kind of a funny example, uh, but there's lots of other stuff you can do to modify the token code so that it has special properties. All right. So that's what I actually want to walk you through right now uh, with a code example. 
So I'm going to do this in Remix. So if you want to follow along with me, head on over to remix.ethereum.org to get started. So if you're not familiar with Remix, basically this is an online blockchain IDE. So this supports Ethereum and you can create smart contracts inside of here with a Solidity programming language without having to install anything on your computer. You can do everything inside your browser. So you've got a code editor here. It's got a um, you know in-browser blockchain that you can use to compile and deploy your smart contracts and you know just uh, do hand manual testing uh, with them inside your browser. So I've created a new file here called Exploding Token. <laughs> so you can do the same, click the plus, and uh, just create your token here. So instead of coding out an entire ERC-20 token step-by-step, step, uh, we're going to use an example that I've created in some of my other tutorials called the DAP token. So you can check out uh, that full-length series if you want to. Um, that shows you how to do that. It's called Code Your Own Cryptocurrency on Ethereum. So I've got a gist here that I'll put a link to down in the description below. This is basically just um, a really simple ERC-20 token that I'm going to copy for this example purpose and put it inside of here. All right, we'll change the name. We'll call it Exploding Token. All right, we'll call it Exploding. And we'll say EXPLD. All right. So what I want to do with this token, basically I want to have a, an account that will be sort of like a master wallet, and this uh, will actually automatically mint new tokens uh, for this person on the blockchain, okay? This is a really basic example. We could do lots of things um, where this particular master wallet will get more tokens over time, um, or you could basically create it where everyone's balance increases over time to have like an inflationary cryptocurrency or something like that. Basically, I'll show you uh, how you might implement my example, and you can take this and run with it sort of a million different directions. Um, but anyways, if you go back to Remix, what you can do, uh, all first do is track the wallet. So let's say address payable uh, wallet underscore wallet. And here we'll uh, say uh, balance of, or sorry, we'll just say wallet. Wallet equals msg.sender. All right, so whoever deploys this token will be the master wallet for this whole thing, okay? So the next thing I want to do is actually uh, change this. We want to turn balance of into a function. So instead of uh, making this a function here, we'll just say balance of underscore. All right, and same here for total supply. We're going to make this an underscore because we want to turn these both into functions. All right, so we'll do that like this. Do functions, and we'll say total supply and balance of. So now what we can do is essentially kind of manipulate this a little bit. So here's a couple of different ways you could do it. If, if exploding token, it, it can inf basically either inflate everyone's balance or it could inflate sort of the wallet's balance. All right, so um, what you could do is go here and say basically like, you know, if um, account equals the wallet, then uh, it could be like, you know, balance of, You know, account times two <laughs> or something like that. Uh, or, you know, you can do that or you can say else. Oh, sorry, it doesn't work that way. So yeah, basically just do it like that and that would instantly return balance of times two, right? So same kind of thing, like if it's total, if, if you do that, um, you would do the total supply plus the wallet balance times two. Basically you could, you know, this plus uh balance of wallet times 2 or something like that right so that's an ex that's an idea of how you could basically make someone else's balance bigger <laughs> a single person's balance and of course that's very centralized and not a great idea for a lot of people's use cases um so what you could also do is basically manipulate everyone's balance <laughs> and you could also do this on a time-based event. So you can accomplish this with, um, you know, Linux based timestamps. So you could say, uh, you get now that's the current time in solidity and you could create some sort of schedule. You could say, you know, if now is greater than some date in the future, um, let's just, you do a basic Unix timestamp, let's create a fake number here for right now. 
Um, you know, let's just say that's a month in the future. You know, if now um, is that, then you could say, you know, balance of account, copy this, paste it here. It's a balance of account times two or something like that, right? That would apply to everyone, not just this single wallet, right? And also for the total supply. Uh, and of course you would need to handle what would happen uh, if it wasn't. So you could say if then or else, right? So that if, you know, now it's greater than, uh, you know, some date in the future, then basically return total supply times two. So the next thing you can do is, um, you know, actually go to a Unix timestamp generator like this. So let's say that like, you know, we want to do a month from now. So today is March 9th, 2020. So I will say uh, 2020, you know, April 1st. So four, one, let's do it midnight, convert. And there's the Linux timestamp. So if you're not familiar with Linux timestamps, basically this is the number of seconds since like some day in the past, uh, since basically January 1st, 1970. This is it right here, okay? So that's how time is measured on the blockchain. Basically it's measured in seconds. So right now what you're saying, uh, if now, uh, this would be the current timestamp uh, expressed in seconds. So if now is greater than you know April 1st, then we'll do this operation. So then it'd be the total supplied by two, right? And then if now is this, then be total supplied by two as well, okay? So you could do this kind of thing where uh, you actually create a schedule, maybe like an automatic minting schedule, for example, where uh, you, know, you, you put several dates in the future, maybe like every month the supply increases by a certain amount or um, you know, every year or something like that. And you could get really complex with this whole thing. And that's what some of the more advanced cryptocurrencies do, okay? So I hope this gets your brain kind of thinking about how this works. Um, and let me know what you decide to create with this information, okay? Leave a comment down in the comment section below. Or, you know, if you're interested in having someone create an advanced cryptocurrency for you, you can always reach out to me at Gregory at dappuniversity.com, okay? So like I said, I hope that gets your... Um, you know, brain kind of thinking about this. Um, as long as your token adheres to the ERC-20 spec, you can do other things inside of these, uh, you know, functions in order to, you know, create an advanced cryptocurrency, all right? So uh, again, I do not ever condone running any scams or anything like that. So if you're going to create something that has, uh, you know, behavior that could potentially harm your users, they definitely need to know about it and you need to publish and verify your smart contracts on Etherscan so that other people can audit them and uh, you know make decisions so that they're not just holding a cryptocurrency that works uh, in some other way than they expect. So also, I'll say if you try to do that, you're way more likely to get completely delisted or banned from an exchange or something like that, okay? So highly advise not doing that. All right, so I hope y'all like this video. Again, let me know what you decided to create down in the comment section below. Um, as always, if you like this video, click the like button down below and subscribe to the channel. And if you want to take that next step towards mastering blockchain, then head on over to dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. All right, until next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.